News today, and my name is Kemini Nyamani. I'm on another fair story. Despite assurances from the government that petroleum or petrol would be supplied to the various retail outlets in the country, the situation is rather different in the Upper West region as only one fuel station can boast of having the product. Many fuel stations or managers were expecting to have the commodity by the close of Tuesday, but to no avail. Here's a report from Wa by Rafik Sola. Many of the motorists who came to buy petrol were at the station yesterday, but unable to buy because of the long queues, even though the closing time for the fuel station was extended two hours more. By 4 a.m. Wednesday, motorists had started forming long queues. Some even left their motorbikes in queue to perform their Muslim dawn prayers. The fuel station, which normally begins operations at 6 a.m., were forced to start at 5.30. Some of the motorists share their frustrations. I ran around the whole town. I couldn't get it. Yesterday in the evening, at this place, Excel, I came around and then there were the people, the crowd was so much. So I felt that if I stayed, I would be able, I would not get petrol. So I went home and I came back. It was still the same time. This time I went back and I went to classes. When I came back, I'm still struggling to get a petrol. As I'm even standing, I even don't know how I'm going to get it. I have managed the fuel, the little fuel I had for, the, for last week. But this time, I can't manage to go to school with the little fuel. Yes. I have to go for fuel. Right now, if they say there's no fuel, I have to pack it. Despite the directive given to the fuel stations by outgoing Upper West Regional Minister Bit Zidden not to sell petrol to owners of the popular Kufour gallons, the fuel attendants served to all those in queue. The manager of Excel Fuel Station, Owari Yavunu, feared they could run out of petrol by close of day. Much. And we have to bring them down to come and calm the people and make sure that everything is intact. But today, the people themselves, they are disciplined and then there is no more, so much pressure as it was yesterday. So today, I think everything is in order and we are working. Meanwhile, the other 12 fuel stations in the municipality have remained closed and managers are unaware of when they will have their supplies. In the meantime, their frontage are now being used by illegal dealers to sell the commodity at exorbitant prices. Rafik Salam's report from WA for Joy News. And well, the news coming in, a group of fishermen have besieged Maslog office here in Accra, demanding uh, their annual fishing equipment. And uh, when we get our report on the ground, we'll bring you detail of that story. But that's just coming in. Coming in. Now, let's go to the Upper West region and find out if the situation with the field has improved. Rafiq Salam is our regional correspondent. He's joined me from the area. Hello, Rafiq. Hello, Kamini. Has the situation improved in the Upper West region? Um, I can say with an umbilic of an eye, the situation in the one municipality has not improved. And I'm just driving towards the total one filling station, and I can tell you that I am about uh, 80 meters away from this filling station, and I can see several long queues, uh, long winding queues in this particular uh, in this particular fuel station. And I can see the police have even I even stopping people because they have, they have, they all the, the cars have filled all the roads uh, because of the no fuel in, in this particular uh, capital of the uh, of the Upper West Region. What do we know about when this should stabilize? Um, I told you in the morning that some people uh, in the morning people, some people, some motorists slept at the bureau filling stations. Uh, at early at three a.m. one. I was uh, checking at the uh, fuel stations uh, at Excel fuel station. I can see about 30 motorbikes, five uh, taxi cars, and they were there. And uh, the manager told them that the fuel uh, wa was finished, but they would move. And mm. so just from 30 minutes ago, total two had a commodity, and everybody is now gravitating towards that particular place. And so there's fuel currently at total, mm. total, total one, and then almost all the motorists. And now, uh, and now, and now, that day. Many thanks, Rafiq, for that update. But news coming in now is that here in Accra, a group of fishermen have besieged the office of Maslog, demanding their annual fishing 
equipment. Uh, but as we uh, put in efforts to raise our reporter on the ground on that story, well, let's head for the Upper East Region, find out the situation with the field, uh, resumption of field at the pump station from Albert. Sorry. Hello, Albert. Hello, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Tell us uh, if there's been any improvement in the Upper East Region. Yes, I can report that uh, there's been some improvement as far as uh, getting fuel uh, here in the Upper East Region is concerned. Yesterday, um, four different fuel stations uh, got some stock, and so uh, the queues were in all these four fuel stations in the capital, Bongasanga. There were uh, so many people who got crowded at these four stations to get fuel. And up to 12 midnight, even to 1 a.m., there were people who still uh, stayed there trying to get fuel. When I checked this morning, uh, I realized that the queues had reduced drastically. And so um, I'm thinking that uh, a lot of people have been able to get fuel by, and so that is why the, uh, the queues have reduced. So uh, hopefully by evening, if there is uh, still fuel at these stations, the situation will be normal here in Bogota. Mm. Thank you very much, Albert, for that. Uh, let's head for the northern region now where Mohammed Hashmi is joined us by telephone. Well, I understand I do not have Hashmi. And so then I'll just tell you, news coming in is that a group of fishermen have besieged the office of Maslok here in Accra, demanding uh, their annual fishing equipment. I'll bring you more of that later on on the program. Now let's uh, pay attention to some developments in the education se sector. Council Chair of the Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition and Executive Director for Child Rights International, Bright Appears, welcomed government's decision to procure sanitary pass for schoolgirls. Speaking on news desk, Bright Appears was, uh, however, not ensues that Ghana had to take a loan to undertake such a project. Parliament Wednesday approved a $156 million World Bank facility to support construction of senior high schools in the country. Part of that amount would also be used to buy sanitary pads and distribute free of charge to the school girls. I can tell you confidently, based on the statistics that we have mm. and the number of communities that we have worked with, I can tell you that it is a serious issue that government needs to pay attention to. And I'm happy that they raised this issue. But uh, unfortunately, the, 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 the platform that they are using to address this particular issue comes in the form of a loan, uh, which, of course, uh, uh, if government do not have anything to do, they, they can follow that. But it's unfortunate that they have to procure a loan to be able to get that facilities for children. But whatever it is, I think there's a priority and that we need to invest in that area to get more girls to come to school at a certain period of time so that they can also meet time on task with the teachers at the end of the day, we have to produce the best out of the system. Very mm. issue now, for, 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 many, for many who this would be very new to, the fact that we would need to provide sanitary pass for our girls to be able to stay in school. I mean, it sounds very uh, alien to a lot of uh, people here in, in the capital city, for instance. How prevalent yeah. is this in the country? Yes, uh, uh, when you go to most of the rural communities, it's, it's a very serious issue. But I think that one of the umbrella body, uh, NEC, has conducted a research in that area. And we found out that a certain period of time, uh, children do not come to school because they can't cross certain rivers. Mm. They can't also partake in uh, using a particular route to school because the custom of the people demands that when you are within that period, you can't go, you can't cross certain rivers or you can't engage in certain activities. So when it's within the period, Children also do not uh, get the opportunity to go to school. Uh, that allows for five or six days or even uh, a week, depending on the situation of that particular child and all that. So clearly you see that children will be losing at least five five days uh, every month. And that will also affect time on task. Well then, the Minister of Education, Professor Jane Nana Upukwajiman, has defended the decision by government to use part of this loan to provide sanitary pass for school children. She spoke to Kujo Yangson on the Super Morning Show. Okay, as I said, it is not the building, it's not the teacher alone, it is a student also. The preparedness of the student and the role of the community in getting the child to go to school. Okay, therefore, you need to find out the data. Where are the girls at the time? Why are the boys in school and not the girls in school? 
And when we lose them in class four, it's finished. Or it takes much, much more than the price of a pad to send them back to school. Okay, therefore, it is better to prevent the problem. As we know, prevention is better than cure. And I would like to add that prevention is cheaper than cure. Hmm. Okay. So then you need all of these variables to come together to provide the quality education. The child must be there ready to learn. And if the child is there and ready to learn, many things should happen. Whatever that is an obstacle to the learning process. It was not for nothing that this country introduced feeding in the schools. It was not for nothing that this country introduced capitation grant into the schools. If you're going to send a child home to go and get money for, I don't know, an eraser, the child may go and never come back. Do you get me? So yeah. in some schools and in some environments, people don't even know that this is a reality for most of our people. This project is conceived with the poorest in mind. And those girls, yes, they matter. They matter like everybody else. And if we lose them, we lose our own future. If we lose them, we lose too much for education. And therefore, you know that recently we've been emphasizing toilets in the schools, and we have seen that the absence of toilets for girls is the reason why they are not in school. Why do you think that argument is happening? Why is it that the absence of to- Why don't you put just one toilet for all the girls? At a certain age, you can't do that because something happens to the girl's body, and it's not something a girl decides to, to you know, choose to happen to the body. It is something that comes, it's natural. And so you need to provide for it. A lot of us who have been elsewhere, we know that when we go to the bathrooms of the schools, if you bother to go to the bathrooms of the schools, you notice that in the girls' bathrooms, there are parts there provided by the state. And at some point, as you're telling me, asking me about sustainability, at some point provided by the community, because the community realizes that the price of PAD is less than losing the child is I mean uh, uh, I mean losing the child's education, so it is provided along with the toilet roll in the bathroom. Of course, we don't need this in the boys' school. So maybe a lot of the people making these decisions and giggling about they have no idea what goes on in the life of a small girl. Let's go on to some news coming in. A group of fishermen have besieged the office of Maslow here in Accra, demanding their annual equipment. We'll now get some detail from uh, a news editor at Adum FM, uh, Samuel Dawuna, who's there for us. Hello, Samuel. Yeah, I'm coming in. Mm, tell us what happened. Yeah, um, well, uh, well, uh, well, early this morning, I think uh, the Maslow guys, I don't know where they slept this morning, but then fishermen from um, um, Western and Central region. It, it's, it's actually a, a campaign by all the fishermen across the coast. But then it, it has been led by those from fishermen, uh, so what do you call it, Western and Central. And they stormed here this morning with, with a number of cars I cannot even count. And they came here in their numbers. You know, what happens is that every year they are giving fishing implements, they are giving equipment, they are giving outboard motors, nets, and what have you, uh, every equipment that they need. And it comes ahead of the fishing season. And the fishing season is now. And so they were, they were certain to have received these things probably even last month. But it hasn't come. And last year, according to me, what happened was that some, 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 some guys just, you know, framed that they are, they are uh, chief fishermen. And they went in there, collected this uh, uh, equipment. And they were selling it at a higher price. The previous year, it was sold to them at uh, 45 million by the government. So mm. it, was, it, was, it, was, it was subsidized. But these guys went in there, collected this equipment, and were selling it at 75 million. To people who can afford, so it's like I mean the highest leader, you know, gets it and who can afford. So this year they said they were not going to, they are not going to sit down for the same thing to be repeated. Mm. Apparently they heard that those guys have come in again and they are trying to do the same thing they did last year. So they said, wow, we cannot sit, I, I mean, at, at, our, at our shores and, and be waiting, you know, for the same thing to happen to us. So they are moved in here, they came here in their numbers, and you should you should see them coming. I'm sure later on we are going to show you the pictures. You should Absolutely. see them in their numbers and screaming. That they want their, their, their and, and apparently they've, they've, they've been able to get some some kind of results from uh, um, the, 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 the Maslow guys here. So I have with me here mm. um, Mr. Mr. Augustine Miamiche, who is a, who is an executive member of the uh, uh, what do you call it? The, the, mm. Sorry, of, 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 of the, the, the Canoe Owners Association. So he's going to explain to you what exactly what kind of conclusion they've been able to come to I, I, after, I, the, after meeting with. Um, 
Ab absolutely. So, Nyamiche, yeah. what, what sort of conclusion was arrived at? Well, what okay. have the Maslok officials been telling you? Yeah. Uh, we met them, and um, the conclusion is that, yes, uh, they've heard our... Um, uh, they played. Mm. So they are going to um, give it to us on time. This is the assurance given to us. So roughly by this month ended, we should get the, 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 the equipment for our use since the fishing uh, uh, season is, is just near. I see. So uh, that is the... What uh, sort of equipment are we talking about? Oh, it's uh, outboard motors, nets, and then floats, um, as well as legs. These are the materials we are, we are, we are, we are looking for. I see. And, and so you, you're happy now? You'd go home? Yes, yes. Per, per, per the assurance given to us, we are giving them uh, the benefit of the doubt. Mm. So we are moving back. If they don't do, then it means next month we will come back. I uh, see. We come back. I see. We'll so, back. so how many how many of you bes besiege the office of Maslock? Oh, we are, we are many. We are, we are more than we are more than eight hundred. I we see. Are more than eight hundred. Yes, we are more than eight hundred. Mm. Mm. The coastal line, Washington Central. Mm. Uh, we, yes. We'll end that conversation here. Thank you very much, Nyamiche. No, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we'll move on uh, to some other stories. And Yeah. Right. Now, residents of Kaklamadu, a suburb of La in Accra, are complaining about the rise of open defecation and indiscriminate dumping of refuse in the area. Speaking on clean communities, the residents posited that the act puts their health at risk. The residents are appealing to the law enforcement agencies to enforce the bylaws on sanitation and arrest the perpetrators of such acts. Meanwhile, the Municipal Chief Executive of La Dadekutupan Municipal Assembly, Rita Odoli Soa, says her outfit will arrest anyone who's caught defecating along the beaches of La. But as an assembly, <clears throat> we have planned to organize swaps for open defecation. And that one is going to be a serious one. And we will we'll showcase them on TV and then in the newspapers for people to see. Because open defecation is a bad thing. So we are going to organize swaps on open defecation. So those watching me, would soon they will see us, the police, the military, the assembly together, who organize the swoop for open defecation. Because you go to certain areas, it's not just the beach. There are big drains there. Even there's one at the cemetery here. And then people are just doing their own thing in them. So we go in there, arrest them, and prosecute them. And for the community, I want to assure them that I think the signboards are almost ready. We'll be mounting them there. So the, 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 you have no excuse. Because uh, we arrest some people. We have a court here. We bring them there. They are fined. If you are not able to pay the fine, the courts, you pay the fine or otherwise. Over the years, motorists who ply the Suhum Sawam stretch of the Accra Kumasi Road have had to deal with mud, dust, and unbearable potholes. The Mobile Maintenance Unit of the Ghana Highway Authority has begun maintenance work on the stretch. Sector Minister Colin Stawuda visited the site. to fix this session permanently by the China International Water and Electric Company who has a contract to do this stretch. The mobile maintenance unit of the roads and highways must be put permanently on this road.
to ensure that this session has a smooth surface and can provide some comfort to the traveling public. We have not been able to raise the funding. It's, it's a project that is funded under our budget. And we all know the difficulties around budget-funded projects in the country. The construction of the Suhuminsam section of the Accra Kamasa Road project, which links Accra to Yushanti and Bunohafu regions, as well as the three northern regions, has stalled for nearly seven years. A development which is having a heavy toll on business activities of the good people of Suhum and its surroundings. This is news, to, news today with me, Kemini Nyamani Amana. Now, the Ghana Statistical Service is to spend $20 million on the ongoing agricultural census spanning 2014 to 2017. The census is being undertaken by the Ghana Statistical Service and the Ministry of Food and Agriculture with technical support from the Food and Agriculture Organization. But what does the census seek to do? Anthony Amos is Director of Survey Organization and Census Director at the Ghana Statistical Service, and he's joined me via telephone. We'll get an understanding of this. Hello, Anthony. Hello. A Anthony, so what does the census seek to do? Uh, um, you mean what is the census is all about? What does this census, this particular yes. Greek census, seek to do? Um, what it seeks to do is to collect information on all agricultural holdings within the country. Uh. Yes. W what for? Um, you know, um, Agric is um, a big component of the economy, and uh, it's been contributing a lot to the Ghanaian economy for some time. Uh, but with, with the service sector growing very fast, we're seeing some decline in its contribution. Mm. And it's been a long time since uh, we conducted a baseline survey for which we can use um, as a benchmark for current uh, data on agriculture. I see. And so the purpose of this census is to update information that we collected so many years back in order to be able to get baseline information that we can use for subsequent surveys of mm. the agri sector. Mm. Which areas would we be concentrated on? Uh, we'll be looking at uh, crop production. We'll look at uh, uh, holders of um, agricultural uh, farms and then their outputs. Uh, for a period. Mm. And then this would serve as a benchmark for us for our subsequent uh, survey of the sector. I see. How helpful will the census be to the general economy? <laughs> Helpfulness, you know, data is very valuable for um, uh, determining the uh, output of the economy. And so for a sector that contributes so largely to the economy, it's important that we have a um, latest and accurate information on the sector, not to, to be able to come up with a, a real estimate for the sector. I see. And so how are we funding this $20 million cost that comes with it? <laughs> well, uh, for every program you need to plan. Just like uh, we plan for other programs, the send the population and housing census, the traffic and health survey, and the others. Uh, you plan you come up with your budget, you meet with the stakeholders, including government, and then uh, you put the cards on the table and see what government can provide and then what the other partners can also provide to support I see. the process. Yeah. So how much of the $20 million are we fielding as a country? Uh, as a country, we're seeding about uh, between 60 and 70 percent of uh, the funding. I, I see. Uh, thank you yeah. very much, Anthony, for your time. Yeah. Okay, Anthony Amuz is Director of Survey Organization and, uh, and Census, uh, at the Census Directorate of the Ghana Statistical Service. Good afternoon. Welcome to the sports segment here on News Today, probably brought to you by Cowgirl uh, Milk. My name is Benedict Ozu. In our first story, Deputy Captain of the Black Stars, Mike Lessian, has called for ceasefire after a disappointing World Cup campaign in Brazil cricket and avalanche of fierce criticism. 
acknowledging the disappointments, uh, the once feared midfielder wants Ghanaians to move forward through decent dialogue. The coach, players, management and governments have come under public criticism for various rules each played in Ghana's record exit from the World Cup. Ghana exited in the group stages after two losses and a draw against Germany. SN, who sat out at the training session, has been cited for indiscipline in a report prepared by Coach Chrissy Apia to the Ghana Football Association. His compatriots, Sule Muntari and Kevin Prince Barton, were suspended indefinitely from the squad after physical and verbal assaults, respectively, in the camp. SN said, Instead, we must all embrace peace and seek for uh, a lasting solution for the team problems through decent dialogue. So you can make your way to the Mindjo Online sports page and read more on that Mike Lisi and, uh, you know, uh, officially coming out to speak on what happened in Brazil. Let's now shift our attention to some other stories and Samir Nasri is expected to sign a new long-term contract with Manchester City when he returns to pre-season next week. The existing deal for the 27-year-old midfielder expires next year. Manchester City officials want to extend it by a further four years. A verbal agreement was reached before Nasri departed for the summer break. The former Arsenal man had a superb season for City, although he was not selected in France's World Cup squad. Former manager Roberto Mancini paid a reported fee that's about £25 million to bring Nasri to the Etihad Stadium from the Gunners in 2011. Nasri uh, suffered a loss of form during the Italian's final season in charge of the club. But has so from the English uh, champions, that's Manchester City, we now switch our attention to Spain and Valencia have sacked manager Juan Antonio Pizzi after just six months in charge of the La Liga club. Pizzi took over from Miroslav Djokovic, who was in charge for a similar length of uh, last time, that's uh, December. He led Valencia to a semi-finals of the Europa League where they lost to eventual winner Sevilla. The Mestela side only finished eighth in La Liga and missed out on European football for the 2014-15 campaign. Singapore businessman Peter Lim took over Valencia in May. So 44 years after his last World Cup appearance for Brazil in 1970, Edson Arantes do Nascimento, also known as Pele, is still loved by many. Proud to the start of World Cup in Brazil, the Pele Museum, a 4,000 square meter complex inside the city's old town, was inaugurated in the port city of Santos. Pele remains the only player in history to have won three FIFA World Cups, that's in 1958, 1962, and 1917. He's also the all-time leading goal scorer for Brazil with 77 goals in 92. So definitely Pele will be looking forward to Brazil winning another World Cup, but this time with young players like Neymar, Oscar, and the rest. But we we'll still stay with the Brazil team and head coach Luis Felipe Scolari has summoned the team's psychologist to a side training base after the emotional assisting win over Chile. The host won 3-2 on penalties. Brazil are under pressure to win the tournament on home soil and play Colombia in the quarterfinals on Friday. That's tomorrow. Neymar is, in, is a side star player and has scored four goals in the tournament so far. Okay, so we're still staying with the Brazil national team and Ramirez, this time he plays for Chelsea and he's a midfielder and he has insisted Brazil are no crybabies ahead of their quarter-final clash with Colombia tomorrow. The host came in for criticism from home fans for showing too much emotion in their tense last 16 victory over Chile on Saturday. But the midfielder has claimed it was normal behavior after securing a penalty shootout win. So the quarter-finals will get underway tomorrow, God willing. We have two matches uh, tomorrow and on Saturday, Two matches will be played. Uh, God willing, tomorrow's matches will be uh, France taking on Germany and Brazil coming up against Colombia. And on Saturday, we have Argentina up against Belgium and the Netherlands will take on Costa Rica. That's it for sports here on News Today, probably brought to you by Cowboy and Milk. My name is Benedict Ousu. Once we hear the released version, we'll let you know. This is News Today here at Top Stories. Minister for Education, Professor Jane Nana Pukuajiman, defends decision by government to use part of the loan to provide sanitary parts for school children. 
Deputy Captain of the Black Stars, Michael Asian, calls for ceasefire after a disappointing World Cup campaign in Brazil triggered an avalanche of fierce criticism.